months ago when Leanne handed in a notice. I knew something was up as soon as she came in. Well, she was early for a start. Ten to nine it was when she made an entrance. Leanne always made an entrance. She didn't so much walk into a room as flounce. Just that flounce never usually took place any time before nine. I normally got in for eight. Quite often I had the place to myself. Sometimes I'd put on a pot of coffee and I'd look around the room at the empty desks and the sleeping computers. There was something about that silence that was very comforting. Sounds silly now. It wasn't just that she was early that made me think something was going on, but she had this big smile on her face. She said, morning Wendy, in a really loud, cheery voice. Now I'm not saying that Leanne didn't like to smile or say hello of a morning. She just usually wasn't that uh, effusive. To be quite honest, often she was a bit groggy when she first came in. I used to tease her about it. Being out on a school night again, have we? Just tongue in cheek, although pretty much put a stop to that one. She snapped back at me one day. As soon as Carl came in, she bolted into his office and came out 20 minutes later looking like the cat that had got the cream. I've just handed me notice in Wendy, she said, so you won't have to be putting up with me much longer. I remember laughing and I went to open my mouth to say, you know, the usual things like where you going and that sort of thing. But before I could ask, she was off telling everyone else her news. After a few days, Sarah from Martin, purple hair, a bit too much sass, if you know what I mean, came over and plonked an envelope on my desk marked Leanne's Collection. Some of us are putting in a tenner, but don't feel like you have to do that, just whatever you can afford. To be honest, I did think £10 was a bit much. I mean, we were only colleagues after all. I said, that'll be fine. I even showed her a picture of a handbag I thought would make an ideal present. She barely glanced at it. Mm, we're looking at getting her a spa day, actually. Sarah also organised Leanne's leave and do. Of course, I didn't want to go. Well, I knew it was going to be all flaming sambucas and fancy cocktails. £12 for a bit of vodka, wine, sparkling wine and mango juice. No thanks. Besides, I had better things to do of a Friday night. And I didn't feel like I could say no though, because we were going straight after work. We went to the wine bar across the road. I felt underdressed. Or, should I say, overdressed. Some of the outfits the girls were wearing. Carl bought all the drinks. Bottles just kept appearing on the table. And because I hadn't had anything to eat, I started to feel a bit squiffy. Not in a bad way, though. Not then. I had a long conversation with Leanne and asked her if she was sure about leaving. Carl really likes you. You're bound to get a promotion if you stay. She looked at me with the most peculiar expression. I'd have thought you'd be the last person to try and persuade me to stay. Won't work though. I didn't do all those years at college just to do admin. I remember being annoyed by that. The way she said just. Especially when I was just trying to be polite. After that everything became a blur. We went to a pub and then another pub. And by the time we got to the restaurant I was... Well, I was in a right state. I'd tried to ask to go for food sooner, but Sarah had shot me down. Eating's cheating, Wendy. <sighs> I was sick in the toilet at Giovanni's. I felt so embarrassed, so ashamed. I wasn't the type of person that was sick in the toilet of an Italian restaurant. Leanne came down and asked me if I was all right. I was, I was a bit unkind. To be fair, it was a pretty stupid question considering I had ravioli and red wine all down my top. She called me a taxi, even waited with me until it came. I didn't thank her though. I was in no fit state. All I could think of was how I'd never be able to face anyone in work again. I mean, that kind of behaviour from Sarah isn't unexpected but me. Me! I do remember what I said to Leanne when I got in the taxi though. Thanks for the worst night out ever. 
they were the last words I ever spoke to her. I went back into the office on Monday and nobody said a word. There was never any mention of that night out again. Well, more important things came along. To be honest, I'd forgotten all about it almost when Carl sent us the email a couple of days ago. I'm very sad to tell you that our former colleague, Leanne, has sadly died. As many of you know, Leanne was very keen to return to the nursing profession and I have no doubt she would have been so glad she could help the current crisis. I've kept on reading the words over and over. I wish I hadn't told her that it was the worst night ever. It wasn't. It really wasn't. I wish there was someone that I could say that to, but there isn't. It's just me here, at home, alone with the computer. And all this silence. 